New Terra Zoo, let's get it. The Africa server is full of extremes. You've got the most powerful builds in the game, including the largest terrestrial build in the entire game currently. But while the African bush elephant may indeed be the largest, it isn't the tallest. Jeez. That title goes to the subject of today's video, the giraffe. But is being the tallest build in the game actually that effective of a strategy? How does it play out in practice? And what abilities did the giraffe spec into in order to compound its innate advantages? Giraffes are the so giraffe's tall. extreme height grants it several benefits. The first of these is how it completely changes the dynamics regarding the game's stealth mechanics. So most top predators in the African savanna opt for the ambush strategy to get within striking Ooh. range of their targets. They tend Got to rely nose. on a combination of innate camouflage and use of natural cover to evade detection while closing most of the distance, breaking from cover only at the last possible second when they believe they can close the remaining distance before the target has a chance to react. This That's strategy smart. is almost completely useless against the giraffe because the stealth benefit from natural cover, things like tall grass and bushes, is entirely negated when viewed from a high vantage point. While staying low to the ground may obscure your character from the perspective of something like a gazelle or zebra, to a giraffe you are completely exposed and your approach was seen coming from quite a ways off. The second main benefit granted to the giraffe via its height is a bonus to its defense. Because the giraffe's hurt box is elevated significantly off the ground, it's extremely difficult for most players to land a hit on the giraffe's vitals. In fact, for literally every relevant threat in the- Yo, it is wild seeing like a lion trying to attack a giraffe, bro. Like, how are you trying to fight something that tall, bro? They gotta have the heart of a lion. No, man. African meta, landing a strike on the giraffe's weak point requires either a risky jump strike or an ambush from an elevated position neither of which are very efficient strategies, Jeez. with the jump strike in particular being easily punishable by any of the giraffe's many powerful counterattack options. Speaking of, let's take a look at what those are. The giraffe's reach not only keeps its own vitals out of attack range, but also makes it very easy for a giraffe mane to land their own attacks. Imagine it Similar to horses hand. and zebras, the giraffe's main method of attacking is its kick, dealing moderate damage to any target that dares enter the giraffe's zone of control. However, when the giraffe really needs to deal some damage, it resorts to its signature move, the Ossicone Bash. The giraffe swings its neck in a wide arc, with the intent to connect with the horn-like protrusions on its skull, called Imagine your main attack weapon is literally your neck and your head. That is so wild to me. I don't know why. Ossicones. <laughs> Connecting with this attack means pretty much instant game over for any player it hits, unless they have an extremely large health pool, such as another giraffe. However, oh, it is a bit more risky to just throw this move out, considering that it puts your normally out of reach weak point in a potentially vulnerable position, and also deals a little recoil damage with each use as well. And if an attacking player does manage to dodge the first swing and get in close, using this move becomes much more difficult, since the close range hitbox is a bit of a sour spot. But still, the mere threat of this move is enough to dissuade most attacks, to the point that most predator players won't even bother with a high level giraffe. Low-level giraffe mains are a lot more vulnerable, and this is where the efficacy of the giraffe's reach and height is really put to the test. Upon spawning in, the giraffe is pretty much helpless. It doesn't have the height advantage on its opponents yet, but because of its slender, lanky shape, it has disadvantage on all saving throws to avoid being- Not you kicking your own kid. <laughs> I, I get it trying to protect it, but that was just funny. I'm done. Yeah. But because of its slender, lanky shape, it has disadvantage on God all dang. saving throws to avoid being like, grappled sorry. or knocked prone. And so it's the job of the higher level giraffe players to complete the long, arduous escort mission of protecting the newborn giraffe as it matures. Now, because the giraffe's attack range is so broad, it is able to guard a wide area and pressure a counterattack on any player that would dare target the newborn. However, because the giraffe does not possess any AOE attacks, defending against multiple opponents at once can be quite challenging, often necessitating that a newborn tank a few hits as the mother chases away one attacker at a time. Now, despite having not leveled up at all, the giraffe starts with a pretty generous amount of HP, but even so, it's not uncommon for the escort mission to fail. And with a respawn time of 15 months, this is certainly one of the most frustrating aspects of giraffe oh no. gameplay. Next, let's talk about individual- That's so messed up, man. I mean, I get it, it's, it's like, 
the, the wilderness and all that but still man the circle of life is crazy Matchups. sometimes first man. we have the cheetah anyways on a serious note first we have the leopard now the leopard is one of the most interesting matchups because of its ability to climb and attack from a high vantage point Leopard players have been known to use their ability to climb as part of their ambush strategy. Are you serious? Bouncing on their target from above. This could mean it's the only predator in the game with an honest shot at landing a surprise crit against the giraffe. But in all honesty, this would be- So leopards just be in trees, bro? Imagine you walking through the forest and a leopard just pounced down on your head. An insanely risky strategy. And since leopards hunt alone, there's really not much reason to try and take down such large prey when they can survive just fine off of the standard diet of antelope and deer. Still, against a lower level giraffe, I could see this strategy working pretty well if no allies were around to rescue it. But since leopards kill slowly by strangling their target with their bite, this gives the giraffe's Damn. party members a lot of time to react and respond accordingly. This is similar to the issue lions have in their matchup against giraffes. Compared to some of the other potential threats, a lion can't actually deal that much damage on its own to a giraffe. Dang. Even against a low-level giraffe player, it's unlikely they could take it out in a single attack, leading to the oh, same no. issue as a leopard, where the giraffe's teammates would be able to rescue it. However, because lions do cooperate, together it is possible for a pride of lions to bring down even a large adult giraffe, but not without serious risk to the attackers. And since lions typically close in on their targets by staying low to the ground and moving slowly, the giraffe's height is perfectly suited to detecting their approach and escaping before they're in any real danger. Nice. So lions taking down giraffes does happen, but it's exceptionally rare. The rhino is an interesting matchup. Obviously, giraffes and rhinos have no real reason to attack each other, but due to the rhino's poor eyesight, it tends to perceive most players that come near it to be oh. threats regardless. Lucky for the giraffe, the rhino's horn is not usually able to reach the giraffe's weak point, so as long as it can avoid getting knocked over, giraffes tend to do just fine in this matchup. Despite the incredible risk- My thing is like, imagine living in these places where these animals just live in the wilderness. Like, imagine you driving a car, you see a rhino, bro, a lion or something like, that's gotta be insane. Range ...of a rhinoceros's horn, the giraffe's kick can still outrange it. And although rhinos are quite tanky, a good kick to the face is usually enough to dissuade further attacks. Yeah, that's gonna An hurt. important matchup I want to discuss is the hyena. Now, because they can't really jump, hyenas don't have anywhere near the vertical threat range that lions or leopards do. So attacking an adult giraffe is pretty much out of the question. However, Thanks. instead of this increased agility, hyenas have a much more powerful bite. Rather than requiring a critical hit, a hyena can crack bone with a single bite anywhere on the target, which can immediately disable their prey and make rescue attempts futile. This is particularly effective against players who rely on their teammates for protection, as even if an ally does step in to fight off the attackers, oftentimes it's simply too late and the damage has already been done. I ain't no hyenas was like that, bro. I mean, I knew that was dangerous, but god dang. Eventually, the teammates will move on and the hyenas will be able to close out the kill. Lastly, I don't think it's any real surprise to see that giraffes still have to respect the space of an elephant. Elephants are tall enough to gore a giraffe with oh. their powerful tusks. So if there's ever a territorial dispute between an elephant and a giraffe, the elephant always wins. Thankfully for a giraffe, its longer legs grant it a faster run speed. So while elephants do pose a serious threat, this hardly ever actually results in direct damage. In fact, by and large, rather than competing with other herbivores for the best resources, the giraffe's unique access to treetops means that it actually makes a lot of sense for other herbivores to tolerate or even appreciate the presence of a giraffe. Mm. They aren't taking away any food that they would have accessed anyway, and could also serve as an early warning system if they see predators coming. So, while That's they're smart. definitely not the most overpowered oh. build, they're certainly up there. Near oh. untouchable for the vast majority of their- That's why you gotta be careful at them, them, uh, zoos, man. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. Playthrough, and a fairly reliable protection in the early game. I'd put them in solid A tier. In fact, it's somewhat strange that other herbivore players haven't started specking into similar height advantages to gain the same survival perks as the giraffe. The giraffe is extremely unique in its role in the meta, which is weird because historically, the treetop grazer giant type build has been extremely successful. Giant long-necked rhinoceros reigned supreme during the Oligocene, and before that we saw this strategy absolutely dominate during the Mesozoic in the form of the sauropod dinosaur. So why only the giraffe in today's meta? There are a few theories on this, but that's beyond the scope of this video. In terms of strategy and playstyle, the closest thing we have today is probably the camel. But surprisingly, the giraffe is not that closely related to camels. Mm. The giraffe only has two close relatives in the current meta. The first is the okapi, a strange build that functions as sort of a middle ground between deer and giraffes. 
And the second is one that basically nobody would expect, the pronghorn, which is completely different than the giraffe in both stature and location. Both the Okapi and Giraffe are only playable on the Africa server, but to find the Pronghorn, you'd need to travel all the way to the North America server. The Pronghorn deserves an entire video to itself since it's such a fascinating build with an extremely distinct strategy from everything else on the American server. And guess what? That video, it already exists. You can watch it right now, a month before everyone else, by subscribing to Nebula, a streaming service Let's owned go. and operated by and for creators like me. Nebula has kindly sponsored this video, and by subscribing to Nebula, you can get access to tons of bonus content, Shout early to access Nebula. to new videos, and all of my videos completely ad-free. Nebula's support has been integral in my channel's continued level-ups. These flashy edits, high-quality stock footage clips, and custom 3D animations are all made possible due to the support of all of you who've already subscribed. If that sounds like good business to you, I encourage you to head to the link in the description and sign up. You'll immediately get access to my pronghorn video before anyone else, as well as all of my upcoming videos early and ad-free. In addition to getting early access to videos, I also recommend you check out some of the originals on the platform, which can't be seen anywhere else on the internet, including series like Modern Conflicts and Becoming Human, and also my Parasitoid Wasp video. All this and more for only $2.50 a month. Special thanks to all of my Nebula and Patreon either. subscribers, and thank you for watching. Anytime, man. Anytime. Yo, man, shout out to Tirzu. Always putting out that good info. Learn a lot of facts. Love watching Tirzu, man. Salute to them. Original video link will be in the description. Hope you enjoyed my reaction video. Stay tuned. Smart to subscribe. Hit that like button. And also hit that bell down there. Stay tuned. I still got a lot of older Tirzu videos to do. So y'all stay tuned for those. Until next time, deuces.